This is Mark Bell from Supertraining.tv, Supertraining Gym, the strongest gym in the West, answering more questions for the Power Project. Welcome and thank you very much for uh, all the responses I get on the Power Project. Thank you for all the uh, admiration on my PP. Anyway, let's get rolling here. We got a question here from my Reb Brab. <laughs> I, don't, I should probably try to read some of this before I actually read it on the interwebs. Anyway, here we go. So uh, this guy wants to know how he's to set up his weekly program. Um, he was thinking of a five uh, five day program where he does bench, vertical pull day, vertical pull day, squat day, press day, and a deadlift day. Sounds very complicated to me. Vertical pull day, I, I would think vertical pull would be deadlifting, wouldn't it? Or a bent over row. Maybe you're thinking of horizontal pull? Or maybe you're thinking of like lat pull downs and stuff? I don't know. Why didn't you just write back? That would have been easier. Anyway, um, it, you go on to mention a couple other things here. But let me just say this. Have one day a week where you bench. One day a week where you squat. One day a week where you deadlift. And if you want, have another day where you do some sort of overhead work. There you go. So that's a four-day week program rather than five. You want a fifth day in there? Throw in a bunch of bull crap that you don't normally get to. Calves, shoulders, abs, that kind of stuff. Kind of an old-school bodybuilder-ish type thing. Um, if you want, you can preset that fifth day and make it a back and bicep day or back, bicep, shoulders, however you want to do it. Um, I like to set up my days because I'm a power lifter. I like to set them up with lifts rather than with body parts. If you're a power, if you're a bodybuilder, you're going to want to do the opposite of that, I think. I think you'd want to set up your, your workouts differently. You'd want to, your intention would be to work and build and mold and sculpt <laughs> whatever body part it is that you're going to work on that day. So instead of saying you're going to do bench, you would work your chest. It's a different concept. There's di it's a different concept. Uh, with different methods and with a much, much different mindset. And that mindset and the intent of the day is crucial. So for you, 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 you go on to kind of say all these things that you hate to do. Um, you don't like dynamic effort and you don't like repetition effort. You don't like using light weights and you don't like doing high reps. Well, the repetition effort method actually doesn't really ever talk about using light weights uh, necessarily, although Louis sometimes will give recommendations uh, just to give recommendations, but in my opinion, the repetition effort method does not need to uh, necessarily be light. Uh, Brandon Lilly recently wrote an article for Power Magazine. It'll be in like our November issue of Power. Uh, you don't have to wait that long. I'll give you a little scoop on it right now. Brandon Lilly does a, a thing that he calls cube training. I'm not going to give it all away here. That's up to Brandon to talk about that. But basically, what he does with his cube training, he cycles through the different efforts. And when he comes around to doing repetition effort method, it's not anything that would be light. He'll do, let's say, a uh, conventional deficit deadlift, and uh, he'll pick a weight, and he'll rep it out as many times as he can. Uh, Brandon's a big, strong dude, so he might pick 650. And maybe he gets, I don't know, six reps, something like that. I'm not sure what he's capable of. Maybe he'd, be, maybe he'd have a little bit more gas than that. I don't know. But um, <clears throat> the point is, it doesn't have to be light. You can pick, um, you know, 80, uh, close to 90%, and you'd still be able to get some rep work in, some reps in, to the point where it's still not high reps. Because you mentioned that you hate high reps. So hopefully that helps you. Um, you kind of mentioned that you, you, ha you have a limited, t limited amount of time. So uh, what I would do for you is I would say you bench, you squat, you deadlift. After bench, squat, or deadlift, reduce the weight by about 70%. I'm sorry, by about 20 or 30% and have at it and rep that sucker out and develop some rep records. Maybe even you do a second set, which would be really, really hard and really brutal, but that will get you out the door a lot faster. Um, so there you have it. Hopefully that helps. On the next guy.
Uh, this guy says he enjoys the videos. Of course, why wouldn't he? The Power Project's taking over the world uh, slowly but surely. And he's got a quick question, um, which everyone always says a quick question, but it's never a quick question. Especially with my, uh, my mouth blabbering and yammering on for hours on end. Um, let's see, is there a standard length thickness of chain that you use? The chain is five feet long, um, and they are three-eighths inch thick. You can buy different thicknesses. Uh, our chains approximately tw weigh 20 pounds. We have one set of chains that weigh 30 pounds. Um, it really doesn't matter too much. It's just you don't want a chain that only weighs like 7 pounds because then you'll need 4 billion chains to really make a difference. Um, so there you have it on that one. And let's see if we got another question here. The next question is a little bit too long, so I'm going to have to drop off here. Here's yeah. Quinny. Here's little Quinny. It's Quinn's birthday today. We're going to a Thanks. pool party. And here comes Mr. Jake coming into the picture. Jake, say what's up to the Power Project people. What? Tell them how much you hate them. <laughs> See you later. And da, da, and that is it from Supertraining.tv.